questions as we try to try our best to solve this. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Mridula, please go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm extremely sorry. Uh, something happened beyond my control and I'm not able to um, repair it. But still, it is okay if you all are here to listen to me. That is also enough for me. Uh, so today, first of all, I'm extremely thankful to Swati ma'am and uh, Prajakti ma'am because both of them are very, very enthusiastically running this institute and they are bringing people and new ideas so that, uh, and they are giving stage to new ideas also. So that is really commendable and uh, I really appreciate their efforts and I'm also grateful to them for calling me on this platform to share my little work. So let us start with uh, exploring principles of Indian classical music in mathematics. So I'll start with a little bit background. Uh, whenever we are studying any subject, it is not just mathematics. In education, mostly art integration is a very common thing. Uh, and multidisciplinary approach is always insisted uh, in teaching learning process. And in 21st century, we are again um, we are again uh, emphasizing the 21st century skills uh, like lifelong learning. And all these processes are coming into education in order to develop the interest in the subject. And not only this, in order to have the overall development of the learners. So in this case, in this scenario, art integration uh, in teaching learning process and exploring the principles of music in mathematics, which is the key subject in school curriculum. So I think it is really important for us to look for certain similarities and to understand how we can integrate these two subjects and bring about the beauty of music, especially Indian music, to the students. So what is the role of mathematics in school curriculum? It has been included in the school, cur school curriculum right from uh, pre-primary level, right from kindergarten level. We stress on three mathematical skills and then we stress on uh, in uh, primary education, we stress on primary mathematical skills and then we uh, go ahead with some logical and uh, critical thinking and then we uh, uh, include some topics related to analytical thinking uh, like in algebra, like problem solving and in collaboration. Uh, we are also stressing project work in collaboration and all this areas are stressed in education in order to achieve the, uh, in order to nurture the innovation talent among students. So we all are um, globally now uh, in every school, every school, even in India, through adult tinkering labs, Indian government is also stressing, uh, giving stress on innovation and a lot of uh, a uh, lot of facilities are coming for school, school students. Um, uh, and I'll be happy to share that my daughter will be presenting and has been selected uh, in first uh, 75 students who will be presenting their innovations and government will be giving them the seed funding. She is just 12 years old. So globally, people are changing, the countries are changing. The, the perspective towards education is also changing. And in this changing scenario, now nowhere there is music and uh, mathematics and science and history geography are remaining as special or separate subjects. So we all are now uh, becoming a beautiful conglomerate of knowledge where entire knowledge society based people, uh, industry the, even the manufacturing industry, they require innovation in order to design different products. And without innovation, nowhere, no student can survive in any, uh, any of the field of life. So now with... Where are you? Where are you? 
uh, now with this uh, we will go ahead and let us in short revise the objectives of mathematics curriculum so mainly the objectives are based on literacy numeracy and cognition and at different levels like school level um, higher secondary level secondary level the objectives are little bit changing the expectations are little bit changing of course those competency statements have been written and accordingly the student progress is measured in addition to this some social aspect is also included in order to connect to indian knowledge system so today's curriculum includes i think so in many countries they have started including indian knowledge system and the subjects which are coming from indian knowledge system even indian classical music then indian uh, vedic mathematics so all these have been incorporated in many different schools and they are taught fundamentally in many different schools in europe and america even in finland so i have also designed one of my uh, uh, few of the courses in mathematics which i run uh, through the institute beyond classroom so we have three levels math garden math explorer and math pro and they all are activity based curriculum and all are art integrated activities in order to touch the basic concepts and to nurture the innovation among students so here i would like to share few thoughts on art integration and art application like if we see the history it is not new art integration is not new art application uh, but whatever we are thinking about uh, that we are integrating art into our curriculum is restricted to uh, tuning certain poems or tuning certain tables mathematical tables or um, tuning certain uh, or making certain um, uh, short forms or just making some rhyming words in order to remember something means just to give a stimulus to memory but art has to do something beyond that because art itself has got its own beautiful capacities and an artist is really a beautiful creation of nature nature has created everyone as an artist the only thing is that everyone has to explore the art in him so principles of mathematics and principles of art when we integrate them equally into curriculum and when they go hand in hand and then we can say that we have integrated the uh, art principle we have integrated it into curriculum we have integrated it into our teaching learning process and thereby now we will be able to achieve our goals where we want to nurture innovation and innovative uh, Uh, talent then we want to nurture um, the polymath abilities among students we want to nurture the uh, mainly the critical thinking and uh, critical thinking and analytical thinking so how are these related to principles of art we all know that they are basically definitely related to principle of principles of mathematics but principles of art are not definitely different than these principles so if we try to enlist the principles of art we can see that this can be the principle of any art so balance emphasis proportion movement rhythm unity and variety so these principles how do we see them in mathematics how do we see them in art and how can we integrate them together how can we show the points where these two things intersect each other so first of all we know that i'll be giving examples for each of the uh, principle of art and how it is related to mathematics that we can um, we will be able to understand so first of all i'll start with rhythm rhythm is definitely everyone understands that rhythm is definitely related to music and especially indian classical music has got a definite it's a state of art uh, design of rhythm where there is a very fine thinking 
about the rhythm usually rhythm is considered to be linear in any in most of the uh, musics but in indian classical music rhythm has got its cyclic process and we call it as avartan entire indian classical music system runs through avartan it oscillates through avartan one after the other and this oscillation creates rhythm then this rhythm also has got some patterns like um the rhythm in doubles rhythm in half ribbon rhythm in three fourth so definitely this is related to mathematics we call it as uh, ek lay dupat lay then we call it as dugun tigun chogun aad lay me hum jise kehte hain we call it as um dead lay aad lay so all these are definitely designed mathematically in order to fulfill the avartan artistically so this is the first point where we can integrate principles of art into mathematics especially principles of indian classical music into mathematics so if i give you example of a uh, simple rhythm simple uh, tal trital so the bolas are dha din din da da din din da da din din da da din din da so this is how is the tempo of this is how is the medium tempo so we can increase the tempo but increasing is not uh, uh, it is not half hazard so when it will be increased it will go exactly double of it we call it as dugun so all this tradition has been coming into indian classical music right from drupad dhamar it is a tradition of say 500 to 600 years even more than that. and for vedic um, even in vedic times the music was existing the only thing is that uh, uh, there were a few of the notes present so rhythm is one of the aspect now the second principle i will uh, explain is uh, movement like the movement of rhythm rhythm and movement they all will they will go hand in hand and the movement will represent tempo movement will represent tempo movement will represent tan patterns movement will represent that articulation then uh, suppose we are uh, we are uh, talking about a rhythm uh, tal trital we were talking about so i'll just show how that rhythm changes and the movement also changes and the mood also changes so now if i am showing you uh, tal trital dha din din ta da din din ta da din din ta ta din din ta din din da da din din da da tin tin ta ta ka din din da da din din da da din din da da tin tin ta ta ka din din da da so i could finish it only i could finish only two avartans because it is taking the half of the avartan this is dugun then when i will finish one avartan in one third of the time of my basic tempo then that will be considered as uh, tigun see the time is getting compressed the tempo is increased and at on the whole the rhythm is complete um uh, completed in three avartans so it's a beautifully articulated structure of rhythm in indian classical music if we think about proportion proportion is very much related to um the musical notes so whichever oc musical octaves are formed in indian classical music they are right from vedic period uh even in natya shastra of bharat there is a shloka which explains the origin of different notes from different natural elements so in uh so in saptak so what we call octave uh in western music we call as saptak in indian classical music and this saptak is nothing but composed of seven different notes and these notes are having their own frequency 
their own pitch and uh, their own different kind of lagav what we say style of pronouncing it in different ragas and that will come to emphasis like these notes right from vedic period like uh, it is said that in vedic period there were only three notes and that music was uh, com consisting of only three notes and from three notes those three notes udatta anudatta and swarit those musicians have located those notes on fingers and they call they call it as gatra veena means they have brought entire music into their body they are living music they were living music in that time they were innovating it mathematically but at the same time they did not miss the artistic approach towards the knowledge and today i think so in mathematics we have uh, forgotten uh that touch midas touch somehow that artistic touch and that is why uh, maybe students are going away from mathematics which is not really very good for them because today is the uh, world of coming um, data science and entire uh, systems are uh, like taken up by artificial intelligence where data input uh, input plays a lot of role so mathematics so all these are uh, created through mathematics all these programs are created through mathematical logic and if students will go away from this mathematics then how will they survive in future knowledge system so we have to maintain interest in mathematics in order to so that they will be able to live their life uh, and, and fulfill their life and they will not uh, because um, they will they have to uh, live in the next 50 years era so with this we will go uh, so i was talking about proportion udatta anudatta and swarit so these three notes are really very uh, they were uh, situated on the fingers and they used to sing those notes uh, like Uh, i'll just give you a short demonstration of udatta anudatta and swarit uh, 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 only three notes so this kind of music used to be uh, existing in vedic periods and if we see that all those ved ruchas are tuned in the same tune if you sing a, if you uh, have listened to singing of any rucha the tune is the same na 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 o purnamada म्यूजिकल कॉम्पोजिशन एंड देन स्लोली स्लोली using the law of proportion the different notes were included in the saptak like uh, there is a very famous experiment explained in uh, sharan deva's uh, grantha uh, he has explained his uh, the experiment in such a way that where they uh, created three different veenas and they demonstrated the musical notes on different veenas veena is a string instrument and in those eras veena used to have only one string and on that one string they have shown experimentally that as the length increases how the pitch of the note changes with the length of the note uh, with the length of the wire or string of that veena and a very systematic 
and a very brilliant experiment was performed by uh, Bharat Muni. And it is famously known as Sarana Chatushti of Bharat. So what he did actually, he just, uh, like that time there was no reference note uh, available. He just tuned uh, his veena to a note. And then he took another veena and just lowered uh, some of its uh, frequency. Just changed its length, reduced its length. And so that you can listen to some another note, musical note, which is uh, which you will feel good to listen with uh, the previous one. And this distance between these two notes was referred to as Shruti, as per Bharat. So how many times he reduced? He reduced four times. And then he decided that Sa will be having four Shruti. So this Sarana Chatushti experiment is really very scientific. And with this experiment, he created different grammars. It is called grama. And the process of changing the shadja from the previous one, he changed the note to the another one. Now that has become the new shadja. So in this way, he created three grammars, shadja gram, and Madhyam Gram. And hypothetically, it is also said that Pancham Gram was also created in that time. But uh, very few, uh, I mean, uh, scientific evidence is not available. So I will not say that, that Pancham Gram was existing. But Chajja Gram and Madhyam Gram was existing. So now with these two Veenas, the experimentation was done and there was addition of new notes. And what we call today as Saptak, in those days it was called as Grama. So there was two different grammars and four different notes. Then they realized that oh, the first one and last one is having same, uh, is sounding somehow same. Then they have, uh, they understood that it is not octave, it is Saptak. Because the frequency of first note and last note, like these two notes, they are sounding same. So it is just the double of the first note. So the span is fixed. But as per Western concept, the distance between or the proportion of frequencies of notes is not even. This sa to sa is not evenly divided among sa to between sa among sa to ni equally. So this is what is the creation. This is mathematically created scale, Indian scale, where we can change shadja, we can create new grammar, we can again change the shadja, and today we are calling this process as murchana. Like uh, most of the times, Thumri or uh, uh, Upashastriya, like uh, semi-classical singers, they are they are singing in high pitch. Uh, like they change the Shadja from Shadja to Madhyam and they consider Madhyam as Shadja and then they sing. So this is another style of singing. So this is how movement, rhythm, proportion and now we are coming to the concept of raga in Indian music. Raga is nothing but a group of, like we call uh, tissue as a group of cells in biotechnology. In music, we will call uh, raga as a group of uh, notes. But it is not just a group of notes. It is not only group, it is the association. It is the association and there is a beautiful relationship between each note in that particular group. And this is creation. This is art. Though this is mathematically created logic, but they have included some art element into this in order to give the different impact. Like if you take simple example, uh, again, these ragas are formed mathematically. Um, 
we have a scientist in indian musician who has created 72 different uh, parent scales and through 72 different parent scales different ragas thousands of ragas can arise mathematically whether we can play them on instrument or not whether we can really sing them or not is another question but he has mathematically created those many ragas he is pandit ahobal he has created um, so this what is this this is nothing but permutation and combination using of different notes in different combination but still that is not enough in indian classical music so one more principle of art along with mathematics has been emphasized and has been included and that is emphasis so emphasis is nothing but in every group of cells uh, in every i'm sorry in every group of notes if you give importance to one or the other note like in in a group of sa re ga pa dha sa if you give importance to gandhar and all notes are shuddh then that is another raga that we call it as bhup raga because we are giving more importance to gandhar more emphasis on gandhar and gandhar is the vadi swar of that particular raga so we are calling this note as vadi note since it is important note for that particular group of notes for that that raga for bhup raga gandhar is important note and all badhat or all articulation is done around gandhar if we consider the same group of notes sa re ga pa da sa sa da pa ga re sa now we are changing the emphasis sa re ga pa da da sa da pa ga pa da pa ga now we emphasis on is on daivat now this has totally changed the raga this is known as raga deshka and different bandishis are composed different uh, songs are composed in raga deshka so bhup and deshka are ragas only with five notes but you can present them differently so mathematically they will be looking same but artistically they will be looking different because we have applied those principles of emphasis proportion movement rhythm to create a unity a united picture as a whole of the raga and we have created the variety also so the last principle comes into existence now this variety will remain only till we maintain the balance of these notes in this particular combination so if we lose the balance then our singing may go towards deshkar or if i'm singing deshkar if my balance is changed balance of notes is changed then my singing may feel like i'm singing ragabhu so it will totally give another perception of raga so all these principles of art are beautifully articulated with mathematics and to create the world of indian classical music the raga music and as we know that there are various ragas which are created and we are really fortunate to have that tradition in uh, with us so uh, while creating art integrated modules me, uh, in the interest of time i think um, can we just uh, move yeah, to yeah. the next slides yeah we will just, go to the next slide sure sure yeah, maybe we can just uh, let that fractals yeah. in nature part go and go to that meru prasar slide if you can sure sure and sorry about that i'm sure this is so interesting we all would have loved to but just in the yes yeah. so yeah. um, definitely uh, you all will agree uh, would agree and i don't have to say anything that art integrated modules in teaching learning process will make miracles and the driving force behind this module is knowledge of art knowledge of mathematics and knowledge of teaching methodology so these three people should come together in order to create the new knowledge 
which we can uh, sub, uh, so that we can suffice we can provide it to the new generation because we have not thought of creating new knowledge for the new generation we have created new technology but we have to create new knowledge also for the new society so knowledge exploring mathematics has come either uh, from surroundings from nature and in various art forms so wh whenever we are talking about indian classical music its articulation we have to speak about uh, we have to go to nature and explore the forms in nature because entire music indian music has come it is uh, believed that in all these notes have come from different natural elements like gandhara has come, come from uh, like uh, dhaivat has come from mayura then nishada has come from uh, like koyal gandhara has come from koyal and in this way there are different sources of uh, these musical notes so we have to go to nature and explore various art forms uh, various forms structures in nature so if we observe this structure carefully it reminds us about uh, pythagoras theorem where there is a triangle and there are uh, the squares constructed on each of the its side and the same thing is repeated but now in this time you have you must have seen that the pattern has been because has become little bit small now if we go on creating triangles on each side of the square and we go on expanding this pattern we can uh, deduce few conclusions that yes we can create a big pattern using the same unit which is repeating so this unit is repeating one more thing is happening with this pattern that is each element is getting smaller and smaller and smaller so in step 1 the triangle was was bigger in step 2 the triangle is smaller and in further steps the triangle and the squares uh, respective squares will go on uh, getting becoming smaller and smaller and at the same time this entire structure will grow into another big pattern so individual element is becoming smaller and entire pattern is becoming is growing big so this is at at the same time getting smaller and becoming big at the same time getting smaller and growing so this is called uh, in mathematics we call this as a fractal so i will definitely not uh, speak about van der broad set and all this totally um, not um, it won't be um it will be a spoiler in in this scenario <laughs> so uh what is common in all this is patterns definitely in each of the pattern you can see that overall pattern is growing uh, overall the pattern is growing but individual unit is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller so this is smaller 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 and becoming smaller in size but overall pattern will keep on growing if this will keep on growing in size overall structure will keep on expanding that is what is observed in case of a simple cauliflower rolls even that the patterns are getting smaller but the structure is getting bigger so in this way if we try to analyze this uh these are few more fractals in nature you can see that this is a glacier which is branching again you can see those patterns in uh in fruits in leaves in turtle backs you can see those patterns when the waves come and go and uh they form patterns on the sea shore so this is that pattern we can find those patterns in the flowers the arrangement of flowers we can find those patterns in venation like arrangement of veins on leaves 
and this fractal geometry is really very peculiar so this is the top view and this is the side view of fractals Mrithala, so we can Mrithala, see that i'm really i'm really sorry we have 10 more minutes so, okay yeah. yeah i'll go ahead i'll go ahead. Uh, so maybe just go to the last one i'm i'm sure so i'm sure. going to bring rudula again to talk more i know she has so much to share with us but with the interest of time, I'm sure everybody has something else happening. So if you could go to the, I mean, uh, focus on our music and then we can yeah. come back. Yes. To this. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yes. So uh, just you can observe the patterns. This is dividing into five and this is dividing into two and totally different structures are growing. We can see that those fractals in succulents and we can draw them graphically like this. So these are under, again, uh, other succulents where we can see those patterns growing and again, the same patterns in shells. So if we, if we see carefully that uh, the, how the patterns grow, expand and at the time we go on becoming fine and fine. So this is called fractal geometry and this is very much related to Indian classical music and how is it related to classical music that I will, uh, <clears throat> few examples we have. So this is a fern pattern, ferns which are again growing and each pattern is becoming smaller. You can see the same fractals in venation of leaf and we can see the same fractals in branching of bronchioles means we are actually breathing fractals it is a fractal is in our breathing and that is why uh, it has come up uh, come out through art i think so it has been expressed through art then if we go to a microscopic level to nature's creation to cell biology as a uh, molecular biology is my subject. So I have observed those patterns even in molecular structures, even in microscopic structures. So here are the few diagrams which are expanded as microscopic structures. So you can see that endoplasmic reticulum, which is the vital uh, site of protein synthesis in our body, it has also got some uh, the same fractal structure. These two are the EM photographs of uh, microscopic nuclear membrane and endoplasmic reticulum. So let us go ahead and study how the actually the fractals grow and how are they articulated in snowflakes. So this is how there is single line. This is stage zero. We have divided in into four. Now each line is divided into four. You can see that. Now again each line into four, four, four and together see the pattern is growing like this. If you see the circular one, it will grow like this. So stage one, two, three, four and finally it will take the shape of a beautiful snowflake which is nature's creation. So we can, we are going, we are observing that articulation is uh, the key pattern, key role in creating the new patterns. So this is how these two are patterns which are comparable. So this is a black triangle which is filled with color. Now I'm repeating this structure. Uh, in the middle there is uh, no pattern, no, no triangle, but it has again created a white triangle. These three black triangles. Now this entire structure will repeat and we get this level three and level four. Now, if we change the pattern with white triangle, then we get the growing pattern A, B, C, D, E like this. So you can see that the final stage of each pattern is exactly opposite to each other. It is exactly opposite to each other. And like this is, uh, there is, there are some gaps and this, I compare these gaps with Varjaswara in any Raga. 
like you don't have to have all nodes to create beauty you don't need all nodes to create music with few nodes and by omitting few nodes you can create beauty so that is what has been observed in these patterns that they have created gaps and they have created beautiful patterns now we will see how these patterns are articulated in order to create a different structure the same triangle now it is articulated like this and you can see that in every triangle towards this edge we are again joining we are again connecting new triangles and the pattern is grown again next triangle will be joined here like this and the pattern will grow keep on growing now if i will change the articulation towards this side then now now this pattern is growing clockwise if i will change the site of articulation then it will grow anti clockwise so this is visual pattern but in music so there is some basic shape we can conclude a few points some basic shape and there is different arrangement changing growth points so these growth points can be related to vadi swara in music which is a point of emphasis and the growth of patterns will be around that vadi swara in music so this will give a different arrangement and that is the reason why we can see bhup and deshkara separately why we can feel them separately because it is totally different approach it is totally different arrangement and change in growth points and this has this logic has come from mathematics and therefore there is change in final shape and that is what is happening in music that we are getting totally different two different ragas which are like bhup is the raga uh, of, of first first prahar means uh, evening raga early evening uh, late evening and deshkar is raga of morning so this is how the final shape is totally different because of fractals and again we can find same pattern within the pattern growing same thing we can compare with architecture again we can see that um, uh, we have taken the section this you can see that the pattern is growing and you can see that uh, it is again growing only at the edge like a fractal grows typically so uh, and individually it is becoming smaller and the entire pattern is growing beautifully into artistic structure so this is mathematics fractal mathematics behind this uh, temple geometry fractal mathematics behind indian classical music so all indian art forms are having mathematics to its basic because it has come from vedas and vedas are supposed to be the basic uh, granthas of indian heritage so indian music is not only uh, vocal music it is a confluence of instrumental music dance and uh, vocal music all together so geetam vadyam tatha cha nrutyam trayam sangeetam uchyate this is what is said in sanskrit means sangeet that is music is nothing but geet that is lyric vadyam that is instrument tatha cha nrutyam that is dance all together they are forming a complete musical structure now coming to tan patterns <clears throat> uh so this i have tried to arrange this uh this particular um uh, saptak in the form of a meru prastar where we have color coded each of the note and now we will try to recite patterns from this and even in indian classical music the tan patterns which grow like this they are called merkhand tan which grow around a particular point and this is called merkhand gayaki which is famous in indian classical music vasantrao dr vasantrao deshpande was the famous singer uh, who used to sing tan patterns like this so if we try to 
decode this mathematically, it will be pro produced in the form of a uh, pyramid, musical pyramid, where we have color coded and arranged them uh, like this. So if we try to sing these patterns, it will be growing. And at the time, at the same time, it will be, its tempo will be increasing. So it will be compressed, right? So if we consider laya, laya, thought of laya, like that is rhythm in Indian classical music, it is, it is a little bit different uh, perspective. So when we increase the tempo, we are compressing the time. So this is what is the concept. So I'll just show you some demonstration in this. Uh, first of all, we will try to sing that uh, flat tan. Sa, sa, re, sa, sa, re, ga, re, sa, sa, re, ga, ma, ga, re, sa, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, ma, ga, re, sa, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, pa, ma, ga, re, sa, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni, dha, pa, ma, ga, re, sa. This is simple vistar. Simple. I have just arranged them one below the other and uh, tried to increase them in the form of a tempo. So now in this way, we are we can articulate it in any form. Like sa re sa sa re ga ga re sa sa re ga ma ga ga re sa sa re ga ma pa da pa ma ga re sa sa re ga ma pa da da pa ma ma pa pa ma ga re ga 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 re sa. So what is what what are we doing? We are compressing, we are repeating, we are changing the point of articulation. Now, now if I take the uh, point as ga. So now here point of articulation is ga. If I take the point of articulation as dhaivat, the. But you will be able to feel some similarity of pattern. Why? Because these are uh, these are created from with definite frequencies, with definite logic of shrutis. And there is a shloka also uh, where the shrutis are distributed among nodes. But uh, today it will be too much lengthy to explain that logic here. Now you just understand that I will I am creating a pattern around Gandhar, and I am creating a pattern around Dhaivat. And I'm feeling that these two patterns are somehow same. So this is how when we come back to Sa, we are, our avartan is complete. Sa always gives us a sense of fulfillment, sense of accomplishment. So coming back to Sa is really very important. And that is the reason why Sa is forming the boundary of this particular pyramid. So I'll give you a few examples even in dance. Uh, I'll share that He is my friend.
I would like to share one more clipping. This is Peacock's Neck Problem from Dilla Pati. It has been beautifully expressed in the form of dance. She is a Jedam Karanzape, famous. We all know that this is based on Pythagoras theorem. Acharya has arrived. Share the link of this videos in the chat if you can. Yeah. Yes, I will share. Asti, yeah, asti, right now. Patale, pidam, It, I mean, maybe people can see it themselves later. How the beautiful Just, But you know, I like geometry. So you conveniently make a peacock perch on a pillar rather than dance in the woods. This is the pillar. It is nine hands tall. At the base a is a snake hole. Here comes the peacock and poor bird. For your sake, he perches himself on the pillar. A snake approaches the snake hole from a distance. 
thrice that of the peer. Prudula, can we uh, have a link in the chat so, box? Because uh, we really need to take some question answers if we have. Yes, we have questions also with the dance. Okay, so please uh, stop sharing your screen. Swoops down upon it diagonally, and as fate will have it. All right, sure. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I know it's it's very interesting, but I think with the interest of time, I know people are leaving also, and people would really like to also ask some questions if they want to. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, anything uh, like uh, you can conclude your thing. That's um. Uh, yeah. That's uh, that's what's happening. Is people. Yeah. Just actually, go. that is uh that dance performance itself is the conclusion where okay. we can actually uh we have brought together the singing, music, uh, as well as instruments together and mathematics also. Yeah. Uh. And can you just uh, maybe share those um, links or maybe you can share it with us. And for everyone who attended the session, thank you so much. We will share the recording of the session and we again apologize for the technical glitch that happened. But in spite of that, Mridula really enthralled us through this last one hour. And I'm so sorry to the participants and to our speaker also to having to cut short this beautiful conversation and beautiful knowledge sharing. Um, but uh, we will take five, one or two more questions. And again, uh, thank you so much. So I think there is a question, Ridula. So all these patterns are actually sequences with many terms from Uday. So Uday, if you want to unmute yourself and ask the question personally, that's okay too now. If you want to unmute yourself and you want to ask the question. Yeah, so like I was basically asking if all these like patterns, like the temples built and all those fractals, so they can be represented as sequences where the although the terms are increasing, it's constant, but the as a whole, the figure is quite large. So like it can be like a series with many terms, where the series actually becomes large on increasing the number of terms. So can it be? Uh, uh, series is a little bit different than fractals, I think, because in series, the individual unit also grows in series. But in fractals, the individual unit goes on becoming finer and finer. That is the basic difference between a series and a fractal. Yeah, so like if we take a constant series, where each term is the same, but overall the uh, series is right, increasing. Right. Yes, in a way, it is a, it is a series, definitely. It is a set. Yeah. Um, any more questions? Any more um, comments? Yeah, actually, yeah. like I uh, mentioned earlier, Swadeji, right? We need to kind of uh, formalize and put it in kind of equations and how we represent these, right? Music. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know, like, uh, most of our Bharti Sangeet is kind of uh, oral tradition. And uh, it's a little hard to probably put it in uh, uh, more like a uh, written and uh, uh, kind of formalized in a way, right? Which can be taught easily, right? Rather yeah. than somebody knowing music, then only they can connect, you know? Yes, it is a tradition and it is a Gurukul tradition. So through Guru Parampara, this tradition has been preserved till now. And now also many universities are trying to preserve it through Gurukul tradition itself. So many universities in India now, they are offering courses in Indian classical music also. And they are taught in a Gurukul tradition way. Uh, and because of recordings and technology, now we can, uh, like now we don't need to write it anymore. So we can preserve its beauty. Uh, like if we have two different Shrutis of one note in two different ragas, 
now we don't have to uh, we have we don't have problem in recording both the ragas and showing those shrutis and understanding the difference between them so yeah. how is that lagav and how is that composition that everything we can record and understand and lot of such efforts have been uh, done and they are still even happening today in india I, I get your point, Papendra Ji. What uh, he's trying to say, Mrithula, is like if we could have some lesson plans or something where we can transfer this knowledge easily to the students. And, and I'm sure you may have certain things that you are already incorporating in your classrooms uh, where you are incorporating this part. And I think that was what uh, Papendra Ji, if I'm Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was what you were trying to say is like, yeah. can we get this actually practically into the classroom where we have certain reference material and can get it? But I right. also get Mridhula Ji's point is... Uh, we, don't, the uh, we don't we don't have such material right yeah. now. And uh, that is what I'm doing presently. That I'm preparing protocols in order to bring it to classroom situation. Yeah, that's, that's so that what... even if the teacher is not knowing classical music, Indian classical music, or if any teacher wants to incorporate it in teaching, learning process, so those protocols may help them. Right. That's that's what's exactly the gap that we are trying to understand and bring it to the classrooms to benefit everyone. Yep. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Thank you so much um, again, Mridula Ji. And... Um, Thank you, everyone, for your patience. For and I will. I'm sure this was this was just beyond beautiful, brother. It was beautiful. Yes, pretty good. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank I you. was thank also you. so. I would also like to express my gratitude to all those uh, listeners and the coordinators, Swati Dave, ma'am, and Prajakti Gokhale, ma'am, who themselves are doing a lot of work in this field, and but still they have. Uh, Thank you for giving me opportunity to um, share a little bit of piece of knowledge uh, which yeah. I have worked with. Thank it you. Was, it was our game, Radula. Totally our game today. So, <laughs> and we will, yeah, with the promise that we promise to bring Radula again back with sharing more of her understanding. And I'm, again, as I said, apologize for cutting your session short. I know you have so much to share but we will definitely bring you again and we will listen from you again. Thank you so much. Prajakti, thank any you. last thank words? You. <laughs> yeah, that's what. Thank you, Brudula. It was very beautiful session. And of course, it is very interesting and to find out connection between dance. So it's basically, mathematics is completely penetrated in our culture. We just have to extract it in the way we want it. So I think uh, we will again come back another session, another time. And uh, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, there's last question from Samriti. Um, from Ridula, can you recommend a book which is similar content? Is there any book like that which we can recommend to the listeners today? Uh, you want to read something on... Integration yeah, classical music. Like, I, I think that's what the question is. So uh, there is a book known as, uh, there are a lot of books. There is one uh, basic uh, grantha is Sangeet Parijat. That okay. grantha can be written and their English translation is also available. Okay. Uh, so you can refer to that book where a uh -huh. lot of concepts have been explained. in this. Sangeet Parijat, yeah. Okay, what we can do is with um, when we send the link to this recording, we will definitely uh, send the links to the YouTube video also that um, Mridula shared. And also, Mridula, we could uh, maybe suggest a few more books for the listeners today. Sure, yeah? definitely. Definitely, I'll share. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Have Thank a wonderful yeah. uh, rest of the day today and hoping to see you all again next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.